Well, to talk more about this with me now, I've got our environment editor, Valerie DeKimp, with me on the set. Valerie, we're seeing these records being broken more and more, particularly over the past few days. How much of this can really be explained by global warming, and how much of it might be due to natural phenomena? Well, this past June, Jeannie, was the hottest June on record globally, uh, and that in terms of sea and air temperatures, according to data released by the EU's climate change services. And then there's also the, the records uh, that you mentioned, the three hottest days on record, consecutive days, according to data uh, released by the University of Maine in the United States. And so, again, all these records being broken, um, but we're also hearing the role played played by natural weather phenomenons, El Niño and La Niña more specifically. And so that's a really important question that you're asking. How do we uh, sort all of this uh, through? And so when scientists look at data available on global temperatures, uh, there's always some natural variation, and this even going back thousands and thousands of years. But the reason we know that human-induced climate change is at play here is because the level of variations is so high. It's way above above uh, the average. And so we know that, again, climate change is at play here. Uh, and that is exactly what scientists are telling us now with the hottest June on record. June 2023 uh, is way above the others. There's a substantial margin, according to uh, the EU's climate change services. Now, that's uh, the, the part about climate change. And again, the natural weather phenomena, El Niño and La Niña, they're both natural. Uh, they're defined by changes in air pressure and also wind conditions, and the, they're the opposite to each other. So La Niña has a cooling effect, and El Niño has a warming effect. And so we see a switch between uh, the two. And the reason we're actually talking about this now is because for the last three years, we were in one La Nina phase uh, with a cooling effect of the ocean. And now we're switching, we're entering this new phase of El Nino. And so La Nina, with its, with its cooling effect, essentially acted as a counter to the warming that we're seeing with uh, human-induced climate change. And so again, uh, two different things, natural phenomenons and also climate change, but important to, to keep those in mind. So Valerie, you keep mentioning El Nino. The UN yeah. Meteorological Organization says it's already here. What are we talking about? And will we expect even hotter records as a result? Well, El Nino, again, officially, it has arrived, according to uh, WMO, and it has a 90 percent probability of staying for another year until the end of, 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 the, of next year. And that is raising alarm bells because uh, scientists fear that the world's climate could enter an even more dangerous phase with, you know, the onset of El Nino on top of human-induced climate change. So we need you need to think of this as global warming warming, but supercharged. And the WMO is even describing this as a double whammy with the warming effect of El Nino and, again, what we're seeing with global warming. For context, the last major El Nino was in 2016, and that remains the hottest year on record. Mm. So, again, will we see more records being broken? Probably, according to what scientists are telling us, because El Nino hasn't peaked yet. We're still, uh, summer is still in full swing in the northern hemisphere, so it's not going to be surprising if we see more temperatures, uh, records being broken. Um, and, you know, El Nino and its warming effect will have an impact on uh, ocean warming effect, will have an impact on marine ecosystems, but it can also bring more extreme weather events. For example, uh, it can produce uh, powerful storms, uh, more intense rainfall, and also longer and more extreme heat waves. So that is also something to keep in mind. Scientists even uh, issuing a clear warning that July will probably also end up being uh, the hottest on record globally. Well, all right. Thanks for that, Valerie. France 24's Valerie DeKim. Thank you. Thank you.